to 2022 headlines, highlights, and history. We are coming to you from Times Square in the heart of New York City, home to the famous ball drop that marks the beginning and end of every year. I'm Joe Fryer. And I'm Savannah Sellers. For the next hour, we're taking a look back at the biggest stories of 2022. It started with a war in Ukraine, a Supreme Court retirement, and that Oscar slap that shook Hollywood. And it's ending with a triple-demic, looming recession fears, and the world uniting on the soccer field. Along the way, there were celebrations, loss, and hopefully some lessons we can take into 2023. But first, let's remember the year that was. The headlines that define 2022 were seismic and historic. Europe's largest armed conflict since World War II. Legal abortion on demand. A Supreme Court decision that overturned more than four decades of precedent. The death of a monarch who had reigned for 70 years. Yet in its earliest days, 2022 seemed more like a copycat mimicking the worst qualities of the two previous years. Now to those staggering new COVID numbers, daily cases surpassing one million. As the new year began, our fight with COVID stubbornly raged on. A lot of them are really sick. With the rapidly spreading Omicron variant killing 60,000 Americans in January. Though with time, the pandemic did loosen its grip. That the Transportation Security Administration will no longer enforce the federal mandate requiring masks in all U.S. airports and onboard aircraft. His mask mandates vanish. Thank you. We need to breathe again. We were so happy. But new threats emerge. There is growing concern about another virus called monkeypox. Monkeypox, flu, and the respiratory virus, RSV. It's a serious illness, you know, with him being this young. Overseas, it was a different battle that rattled the world. In February, Russia stormed into Ukraine with high expectations, only to be met by a resilient foe. Its inspiring leader, President Zelensky, refused to flee. The strikes pushed Ukrainians to bomb shelters and to the country's swollen borders. You hear the whistles and the families have come with all of their belongings and people are hugging and saying goodbye and not sure if they will ever come back. Millions of Ukrainians suddenly became refugees. But as the year progressed, Ukraine's military took back land that had been lost just months earlier. Steady progress in a long war, now entering the dark days of winter. In America, winter stormed in early. We've seen over 50 inches of snow in under 24 hours. A record-breaking snowstorm dumped nearly seven feet of snow on the Buffalo region. While in Florida, Hurricane Ian pummeled the coast with winds that reached 155 miles an hour. You can't withstand this kind of stuff. Just shy of a Category 5. These cars were all nicely parked, uh, and they're now all floating freely. It would be Florida's deadliest hurricane since 1935. Gun violence continued to devastate communities across the nation with hundreds of mass shootings. We all ran to the back. He was shooting at the milk. Ten were killed at a supermarket in Buffalo, seven at a 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois, five were murdered at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs, and at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. Can you tell the police to come to my room? I already told them to go to the room. We're trying to get someone to you. Nineteen young children and two teachers lost their lives when a teenage gunman ravaged their campus. <laughs> How did he get in there? Adding to their grief, questions over law enforcement's delayed response. Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Emotions were high across the country when in June the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. I feel like I got punched in the stomach this morning. For some, there was anger and fear. We're not going to be treated as second-class citizens. For others, it was a celebratory moment decades in the making. 
my heart is really full and just absolutely thrilled that the Supreme Court justices overturned uh, Roe versus Wade. Abortion was one of many issues dominating politics in 2022. So was inflation, which reached 40 year highs. In every aspect, it's higher, you know, but your wages don't go up any higher. In the spring and summer months, the national average for gas soared. $5 a gallon is crazy. While President Biden's approval rating dropped. Despite that, Democrats were able to fend off a red wave during the midterms. NBC News is now projecting that Democrats will maintain control of the Senate. Holding the Senate while narrowly losing the House. In the election's wake, Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced she was stepping down from leadership just weeks after her husband was attacked in their home. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. The dust from the midterms was still lingering in the air when the 2024 campaign began. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Former President Donald Trump declared his candidacy, running again amid a laundry list of investigations. That includes a raid of his Mar-a-Lago estate, where the FBI seized thousands of documents, some marked classified. Well, back in Washington, the House committee investigating the January 6th insurrection held televised hearings. One of the star witnesses, a 25-year-old former Trump White House aide named Cassidy Hutchinson. He didn't look up from his phone and said something to the effect of, there's a lot going on, Cass, but I don't know, things might get real, real bad on January 6th. In London, Queen Elizabeth celebrated her platinum jubilee, marking 70 years on the throne. Her June appearances on the Buckingham Palace balcony, flanked by family, including her scene-stealing great-grandson, Prince Louis, would end up being her final times on that storied perch. Some sad breaking news. Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest reigning monarch, has died. In September, the Queen died at the age of 96. Her son Charles immediately ascended to the throne. As I stand before you today, I cannot help but feel the weight of history. For the UK, it was a year of transition with one prime minister resigning. I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world. Then just weeks later, another. That I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. Three leaders in a single year. I will unite our country. Change was on the minds of protesters in Iran. They took to the streets, angered by the death of a young woman who died after she was arrested for allegedly violating the country's strict dress code. While in Russia, American basketball star Brittany Griner spent most of 2022 behind bars, convicted on drug charges. This has been a very traumatic um, experience before she was released in December in a prisoner swap. The world gathered in Beijing for the Winter Olympics, where snowboarding phenom Chloe Kim captured gold again. All right, opening ceremony, number five. As the flying tomato came in for a final landing, Sean White retired after barely missing the podium. This is, uh, I think, my last run. No matter what, this is it. I think so, yeah. And another GOAT, Serena Williams, seemed to step away from tennis after an emotional run at the U.S. Open. But later she proclaimed, I am not retired. Serena Williams, <laughs> who is your best friend? Williams' childhood story was featured in the movie King Richard, starring Will Smith, whose Oscar win was overshadowed by this. The slap heard round the world. Smith later apologized for the moment, which stole the spotlight from other winners, including Best Picture Coda, an indie drama about a deaf family. What the hell? Good morning, aviators. Big screen blockbusters came roaring out of the danger zone, with Tom Cruise's Top Gun Maverick topping a billion bucks at the worldwide box office. I just want to manage expectations. Twitter got a controversial new owner, Elon Musk, while the Supreme Court got a history-making new justice, Ketanji Brown Jackson. She replaced the retiring Stephen Breyer, becoming the first black woman to sit on the high court. 
in my family, it took just one generation to go from segregation to the Supreme Court of the United States. And liftoff of Artemis One. And NASA's Artemis One finally went from Earth to space. After the launch was called off a few times, the rocket took off in November, an unmanned mission that's paving the way for astronauts to someday return to the moon, the dawn of a new era as the world looks forward to a new year. This fall, Hurricane Ian pummeled southwest Florida, devastating communities along the coast. Climate experts are warning these catastrophic storms are becoming the norm as warming temperatures force more extreme and destructive weather events. Here's NBC News meteorologist Dylan Dreyer. 2022, a violent year of climate and weather extremes. From heat waves and drought to catastrophic flooding and hurricanes, the impacts reverberating around the globe. So far this year, $15 billion weather disasters hit the U.S., according to NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The final count yet to be tallied. The first billion dollar disaster came in the spring when warmer temperatures fueled three deadly tornado outbreaks in as many weeks. Right, right, right! Spawning more than 200 reported tornadoes across more than a dozen states. It's very devastating when you, you know, like it's all your hard work is just going up in the air. In the West, sections of Yellowstone National Park were devastated by destructive flash floods. Roads were washed away, and the park closed to the public for the first time in three decades. Climate change causing the atmosphere to be warmer and wetter, making conditions right for these types of events. It was very surprising how quickly it came. This summer was a story of extremes. Europe had its most intense heat wave in recorded history. London set a historic all-time high of 104 degrees. Back in the U.S., six 1,000-year floods occurred in the span of five weeks in July and August. Places like St. Louis, Dallas, and eastern Kentucky deluged with 8 to 15 inches of rain in just 24 hours. Death Valley received its entire year's worth of rain in just three hours. The footprint of climate change leaving its mark across nearly the entire U.S. Parts of the West baked in the most severe heat ever recorded in the month of September. I've never dealt with something this hot before. Nearly 300 weather stations hitting their hottest temperatures in places like Salt Lake City, Reno, and Sacramento. Meanwhile, already extreme drought conditions in the region worsened. Lake Mead's water level plunged to its lowest yet the Bureau of Reclamation declaring a tier two water shortage for the first time ever, hoping to avert a water crisis. After a slow start to the hurricane season, Category 4 Ian roared ashore southwest Florida with winds topping 150 miles per hour, tying for the fifth strongest hurricane ever to strike the United States. Neighborhoods in Fort Myers and Naples left in ruin. Warmer waters are acting as jet fuel, causing the storms to rapidly intensify. Just as the season was coming to a close, Category 1 Nicole became the first November hurricane to make landfall in nearly 40 years. Scientists attribute this to warmer sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean, this year running up to 3.5 degrees above average. Nicole is the nail in the coffin for Daytona Beach Shores. Ian came in and did all this damage, and now Nicole is just putting us away. In upstate New York, winter arrived early when a massive November snowstorm rewrote the history books, burying neighborhoods and even the Buffalo Bills Stadium under 80 inches of snow. There's nothing in the store. Here you, got bear. you can't get a loaf of bread or anything. Finally, with eerie similarity to last year, a series of deadly cool season tornadoes ripped through the south. More than 100 reported over two weeks across seven states between Thanksgiving and Christmas. This is my house right here, y'all. My house is just gone. The December Twister is part of a massive week-long cross-country storm that dropped four feet of snow in the west, brought blinding blizzard conditions to the upper Midwest, and dozens of tornadoes to the south. Dylan Dreyer, NBC News. For the third consecutive year, the U.S. passed a tragic milestone with more than 600 mass shootings. Here's NBC News senior national correspondent Tom Yamas. In May, two shootings in the span of 10 days shocked the nation. 
In Buffalo, New York, a domestic terrorist motivated by hate killed 10 people at a supermarket in a predominantly black neighborhood. He came into my community with hate. He drove hours to come here and do what he did. Days later, Uvalde, Texas, a shooting rampage at Robb Elementary School left 19 children and two teachers dead and a community shattered. More than 300 officers responded to the scene, but video showed armed police officers waiting for more than an hour to enter the classrooms. I was there in Uvalde, pushing the police for answers. Was there a school officer on campus? And was that school officer armed? Because that's what we've been told. No, there was not an officer readily available armed. No. What, was there an officer? No. Why? Two grieving fathers whose children died that day told me more needs to be done. How many more kids have to die? You think that, oh, this doesn't happen to me or it doesn't happen here or anything until it does, and it will. Then, on July 4th, in the Chicago suburb of Highland Park, a rooftop shooter killed seven people at a parade. The, I spoke FBI to a bystander who was there dead. with his family, all of whom narrowly missed being shot. I don't yeah. want to think about that. Just steps, right? It's crazy. It's random. You live or die by just random. This fall in Colorado Springs, a drag show interrupted with bullets. A gunman killing five at an LGBTQ nightclub. A survivor describing the moments the gunfire broke out. Bodies on the ground, blood, shattered glass, people dead. It was sad. An Army veteran risked his life to save others. I just know I got into mode and I needed to save my family. And that family was, at that time, everybody in that room. Three days later in Chesapeake, Virginia, a Walmart employee opened fire in the store's break room, killing six people. As another deadly year comes to a close, this December we mark 10 years since the Sandy Hook massacre when 21st graders were shot dead in their classroom. At the time, I was only seven years old. I heard and saw things no child, no person should ever have to see. A decade since that tragedy and hundreds of more mass shootings. President Biden signed gun safety legislation. It is intended to expand background checks, red flag laws, and mental health care, but it stops short of banning assault weapons. I don't know where we go from here. Except I've, I've been asked the question, you know, what would I say? I was like, there's nothing to say. Right. It's, it's been said. and. We as a society are unwilling to change. Tom Yamas, NBC News. One year ago at this time, life was normal throughout much of Ukraine. But Russia's President Vladimir Putin changed that with the launch of the massive invasion of his neighbor. As you saw a moment ago, Ukrainian forces defy the odds and are now on the offense. But the future is still unclear. NBC chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel has more. And we want to warn you, some of the images you're about to see are graphic. In the twilight hours of February 24th, President Vladimir Putin took to Russian state television to announce a special military operation that aimed to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. Minutes later, explosions rocked Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. Missiles rained down across the country, and Russia's massive military moved across the border. Putin's special operation was clearly war. Although Putin had long denied his intentions to invade his neighbor, he'd openly claimed Ukraine was part of Russia and demonized Ukraine's leaders. Putin had already illegally annexed Ukrainian territory, the Crimean Peninsula, in 2014 with little international backlash. This time, condemnation came quickly. Putin's choice to make a totally unjustifiable war on Ukraine will have left Russia weaker and the rest of the world stronger. Wide-ranging sanctions were rolled out, but they did little to deter. Russia's military, 10 times the size of Ukraine's, moved swiftly to surround Kyiv. But almost immediately, cracks in the mighty Russian army began to appear. Their advances stalled. The Ukrainians organized and fought back. Civilians banded together. Many took up arms to defend their country. It seemed Vladimir Putin hadn't accounted for this. 
the will of the Ukrainian people. Led by an unlikely hero, President Volodymyr Zelensky, the nation rallied behind the comedian turned politician, now wartime leader. Facing resistance and failing to capture Kyiv, Russia focused its attacks on eastern Ukraine. <laughs> Moscow called it a change of strategy. For the Ukrainians, it was a major victory, but any celebrations were short lived. As Russian forces withdrew from around Kyiv, evidence of atrocities and war crimes on a massive scale emerged. First in Bucha, the pattern would continue in other liberated areas. Ukrainian officials documented 50,000 alleged Russian war crimes. Russia has repeatedly denied its soldiers are responsible. Why do you think this is happening, that there are now thousands of allegations of Russian war crimes here? Thousands of them. Something was, you know, something was broken you know, with, with mentality, with them. In the east and in the south, Russia's bloody campaign continued. With Putin's forces firing missiles and artillery to hammer towns and cities, often indiscriminately. U.S. officials estimate tens of thousands of Ukrainian civilians have been killed and 100,000 Russian troops killed or wounded. Ukrainians have soldiered on, backed by international support, including $20 billion in weapons and military assistance from the United States. Ukrainian troops have used it to launch a major counteroffensive, liberating large parts of eastern Ukraine. And then the southern city of Kherson, occupied by Moscow for eight months. As the Ukrainian military moved in, soldiers were given a hero's welcome. <laughs> President Zelensky called the liberation of Kherson the beginning of the end of this war. How are you feeling today, Mr. President? How are you feeling? Very well. How is this moment for you? The moment is very important. That is the biggest, the biggest city what was occupied it since 24th of, uh, you know, of February. So that is the biggest city, and now it's free. So Ukraine came. So I'm happy. As the conflict nears one year, there's still no end in sight. Ukrainians fear the world is losing interest in the war as Putin employs a brutal new tactic, mass targeting Ukraine's infrastructure, just as temperatures plummet. He couldn't take Ukraine as completely or quickly as he'd hoped. Now it seems he's trying to starve and freeze the country into submission. Richard Engel, NBC News. From the gas pump to the grocery store, inflation sent prices soaring through the roof last year. NBC News business and data reporter Brian Chung breaks down the numbers. Overall inflation picked up steam over the beginning of 2022, clocking in at 9% in June, the fastest pace of price increases since the 1980s. Food prices soared, a gallon of milk now averaging $4.22. Chicken, a buck 84 a pound, and a dozen grade A eggs, $3.59 a dozen, all more expensive than this time last year. Gas prices top $5 a gallon in the summer before tilting below $3.50 in the later part of the year. And then rent, the biggest spend for most households, jumping 7 to 8%. Inflation did show signs of backing off in the later parts of the year as the Federal Reserve accelerated the pace of its interest rate increases. One quarter percentage point, a half percentage point, three quarters of a percentage point. The Fed continued to raise rates at that pace, a speed not seen in decades. The idea to make borrowing costs expensive enough to slow the economy and inflation. Among the sharpest slowdowns in the housing market, where home buyers are saying nope to sky high mortgage rates. 30 year fixed rates topped out at 7% in the fall, more than double what it was a year ago. The tech sector faced a pullback as well as Amazon and Meta laid off thousands of workers. I want to say, you know, up front uh, that I take full responsibility for this decision. The tech layoffs did not appear to have a major impact on a strong jobs market where the unemployment rate touched a 50-year low of 3.5% in September. Instead, the damage was done in the stock market where the S&P 500 lost about a quarter of its value. Tech stocks were among the biggest losers. Is everyone with me? Yeah. All right, then let's do this.
Meanwhile, labor unions at warehouses and coffee shops across the country mounted challenges against America's largest companies, demanding better pay, benefits, and working conditions. Among other business headlines, a cascade of bankruptcies in the crypto space, a flurry of high-profile mega mergers, and the discontinuation of the beloved Chaco Taco. Still ahead, long live the king. We'll remember the royal family's historic year. Welcome back to 2022 Headlines, Highlights, and History. 2022 has been a year of incredible accomplishment in space exploration. From Artemis to DART to SpaceX to the next generation of astronauts preparing for a return to the moon. NBC's Tom Two, Costello has documented one. every Booster moment ignition. of this year in and space. Of Artemis one. In a year of triumphs for space exploration, NASA's Artemis moon mission was the headline-grabbing finale. A 25-day, 1.4 million mile test flight of the new Orion spaceship that will one day carry astronauts back to the moon. An 80-mile high, high-resolution flyover of the moon, a long orbit deeper into space. Orion is right on the money, coming right down the pike. Then a spectacular re-entry with the heat shield hitting 5,000 degrees. That's half the temperature of the sun. And there it is. High over the Pacific. Before a gentle parachute drop into the Pacific Ocean. Splashdown. It is the beginning of the new beginning, and that is to explore the heavens. That new beginning will include astronauts on a similar test flight around the moon in 2024. Then a lunar landing in 2025 or 26 with a crew that includes a woman and a person of color. The first return to the moon since those heady days of Apollo. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. But NASA is also leaning heavily on private companies. SpaceX now regularly launches both crew and cargo to the ISS. This is the view of Earth from the International Space Station and a simulator at NASA in Houston. Outside the cupola, the blue richness of Earth and the blackness, the deep blackness of space. And right there, the Canada arm, which has reached out to grab an incoming cargo vessel. And SpaceX is now working overtime on its Starship that will carry astronauts to the moon. Then perhaps Mars in the late 2030s. Another huge success in 2022, NASA's DART mission. And we have impact. The spacecraft in time lapse traveling at 14,000 miles per hour, slamming into a small asteroid named Dimorphos 7 million miles from Earth and pushing it ever so slightly off its orbit. A critical success if NASA hopes to one day deflect an incoming planet killing asteroid away from Earth. Now, this is a watershed moment for planetary defense and a watershed moment for humanity. But the most visual space achievement in 2022 were those spectacular images from the Deep Space James Webb Telescope. Using infrared cameras, we're now looking at light billions of years old. The creation of the universe, distant stars and galaxies, stunning nebulas, begging the question, are we alone? We could have an answer about whether or not there's life in the universe, which would change everything, right? Would change our, would change our entire understanding of what we were and who we are in the universe. It's big and beckoning to a new generation of explorers. Tom Costello, NBC News, Houston. Queen Elizabeth II marked a record-setting reign this year before she passed away in September. We're unlikely to ever see another monarch like her in our lifetimes. Here's NBC News Chief International Correspondent Keir Simmons. For the royal family, 2022 was a year of great joy, profound sadness, and extraordinary change. The Platinum Jubilee marked the Queen's 70 years on the throne, the longest reigning monarch in history. The celebration filled with fireworks, music and pomp and circumstance. 
The crowds cheer, expressing their gratitude for Her Majesty's life of service. The celebration finished with the traditional Buckingham Palace balcony appearance. The Queen alongside three future kings, Charles, William and George. It was to be her final wave to her subjects. On September 8th... Buckingham Palace has just announced that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has died. The Queen passed away quietly in her favourite home, Balmoral Castle in Scotland. Her son, the Prince of Wales, was now King Charles III. God save the King! Queen Elizabeth was a life well lived, a promise with destiny kept, and she is mourned most deeply in her passing. That promise of lifelong service I renew to you all today. Much of the world was united in grief. Hundreds of thousands of mourners came to pay their respects. Millions more watched across the globe. The passing of the Queen brought about other changes as well. People searched for the phrase Queen Consort to understand Camilla's new role. After seven decades, the national anthem was once again, God Save the King. In the background of all these changes was the new scrutiny of the royal family and its relevance in the modern age. The new Prince and Princess of Wales, Kate and William, playing an increasingly prominent role, including a trip to the USA, their first in eight years. There are continuing questions about the rifts between Prince Harry and his family. Harry and Meghan made a show of unity with the family for the Queen's funeral, but as Harry told Hoda Kotb earlier this year, he stands by his decision to step back from royal duties. Home for me now is, is, is you know, for the time being, it's in the, it's in the States. Harry and Meghan are now focused on telling their side of the story. When the stakes are this high, doesn't it make more sense to hear our story from us? With a podcast, a Netflix documentary and Prince Harry's autobiography due to be released in January. Next year's main royal event is in May, the coronation of King Charles III, the first in 70 years. Keir Simmons, NBC News, London. The Queen was not the only major headliner who died in 2022. We want to take a moment now to remember some of the other notable figures we lost this year. It is a long journey to this moment. My story is the story of how to survive all odds, no matter what the odds are. Very often the things that you're most afraid of are the things you really need to just go for. found that being a woman is a handicap. Uh, in fact, I found it uh, a terrific uh, gender to be. Still ahead, a slap, a breakup, and ticket turmoil. Headlines that shook the entertainment industry this year. Welcome back to 2022 Headlines, Highlights, and History. Now, we often look to celebrities as a form of aspirational escapism. They seem to lead these lives full of glitz and glamour. But this year's celebrity news will often had us running away from the Hollywood Hills. The year began with a bang, or more specifically, a slap. 
Actor Will Smith stormed the Oscars stage in March, hitting Chris Rock in the face after the comedian made a joke about Smith's wife, Jada. The ugly incident overshadowing Smith's Best Actor win just moments later. He was later banned from the Oscars for 10 years and posted a lengthy apology. Chris, I apologize to you. No such apologies were issued after the closely watched defamation trial between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. The divorce stars spent weeks in court accusing each other of disturbing incidents of domestic abuse. He just hit me over and over and over again. I've never struck a woman in my life. Both were ultimately found liable for defamation against each other, with the jury awarding significantly more damages to Depp. Heard appealed the decision, but settled this month. And then there was the year in Ye, rapper formerly known as Kanye West. Early in 2022, he launched an Instagram campaign against comedian Pete Davidson, who was dating his ex-wife, Kim Kardashian. He then stunned observers by wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt during Paris Fashion Week, but it was anti-Semitic comments made later in the year that sparked even more backlash, losing Ye lucrative partnership deals, including Adidas. Taylor Swift had some bad blood, and this time it wasn't with Ye, but with Ticketmaster. High demand for the pop star's upcoming tour led to a botched pre-sale with error messages, long waits, and outrageous prices. I am really upset with Ticketmaster today. I didn't get tickets to the Taylor Swift concert. Ticketmaster later apologized, saying demand for tickets reached 3.5 billion system requests, a record on its site. Tom Brady is now sporting one less ring, his wedding ring. The football goat and supermodel Giselle Bündchen finalized their divorce in October after 13 years of marriage. It was a rocky year for the couple after Brady returned to the football field following a short 40-day retirement. For all the negative entertainment news of 2022, there was one hopeful note for celebrity watchers and romantics, the return of Benifer. I'm engaged! <laughs> In April, Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck announced they were finally going to be married nearly two decades after their first engagement was called off. Jennifer walked down the aisle not once, but twice, proving that yesterday's headlines could be tomorrow's hope for Hollywood. Hope for us all. Amen to that. All right, Joe, here's one for you. Are there more doors or wheels in the world? You know, I'm gonna guess doors because every car doesn't just have wheels, but it also has doors. Whose theory is that? Yeah, that was your theory. That's right. All right, that was one of the mind-bending conversations that defined the year in social trends. 2022 was the year social media got real, starting with the growing trend to be real. The app drew millions of users with its unfiltered concept, all getting the same notification to take a picture of what they are doing at that exact moment. It's really like just a snippet in someone's life. So no matter where you are in an important meeting, you oh, break or up or cuddling stop, your child. Cuddling your child, you stop being real. In so the middle a picture of, of being, being real. real. The TikTok takeover took hold this year, drawing in more than 1 billion active users. And it wasn't just dance trends. People found new ways to get real following major world events gaining traction across all of social media, like tracking the realities of war after Russia invaded Ukraine. How do you pack potentially your entire life for five people? Calling attention to the historic protest in Iran and reaction to the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade. Social media doesn't always mean serious, though. There was one viral trend sweeping the world, Wordle. The daily word game allowed users to share their triumphs, resulting in timelines flooded with yellow and green squares. Moving on, are there more doors or wheels in the world? A straightforward question that sparked thousands of debates. We got bikes, motorcycles, 18-wheelers. Drawing in responses from brands, celebrities, and even late-night TV. I'm ready to fight anyone who says doors. Wow, all right, this is very good. I see yeah. we're team wheels. Yeah, I'm glad we agree. Never forget, buddy. Team wheels. Gotta disagree with you, Jimmy. We were still team door. Definitely solid evidence. All right, but just add it to the list, though, of age-old debates like, is that dress gold or blue? That one blew my mind. Yeah, I still don't know. You're watching 2022 Headlines, Highlights, and History.
This January, a new Congress will be sworn in with Republicans taking control of the House and Democrats gaining a seat in the Senate. Now, that midterm result was not what many expected going into 2022. It's just one surprise from a very busy political year. Here's more from NBC News political director and moderator of Meet the Press, Chuck Todd. Well, as 2022 draws to an end, we'd like to look back at a year that saw a historic midterm election and early entrance into the 2024 presidential election, which just happens to be a former president of the United States. The Republicans regained the House barely. Democrats retained the Senate. And once again, a special counsel was appointed to take a closer look at Donald Trump. Deja vu all over again. America watched, though, as January 6th committee presented its findings and the world watched as Russia invaded Ukraine. So joining me to discuss what it all means for the year ahead is our chief White House correspondent, Kristen Walker, and our senior Capitol Hill correspondent, Garrett Haake. Obviously, um, with the midterms being over, and the fact that the midterms weren't decisive, all they did was essentially prove to us we're just as divided as we were before, we're in the middle of this trench warfare, we spent $6 billion to move one Senate seat and 10 House seats, so here we are. Um, all of it was a prelude to 24, which is essentially, is the Biden reelect already begun? It is effectively already begun, Chuck. The president said he intends to run. He's going to make an official decision in the new year after huddling with his family over the holidays. But look, I can tell you in talking to folks who are close to him, he's ending this year feeling emboldened because uh, he got a lot of legislation passed. I think the most important thing as it relates to the president's potential reelection campaign is the economy. Um, gas prices ending the year at their lowest level than they've been um, in a year. Yeah. Having said that, there is still so much unknown no. as we head into the new year. What will inflation look like uh, as we get closer to 2024? Yeah. I think that's going to be a big question. You know, in your beat, Garrett, there's actually a massive change, okay? Mm. No Nancy Pelosi, yeah. okay? Forget everything else. Yes, it's, it's still a narrow majority. No Nancy Pelosi. That's a seismic change. I've never known a Congress without Nancy yeah. Pelosi in a leadership role. Look, I mean, this last Congress, for all the time we spent talking about stuff not moving, whether it was the Build Back Better or the various you know component pieces of that, a failure to change the rules in the Senate, was historically productive. I mean, I've covered a number of Congresses now, and this is the one that's gotten the most done ever. And so much of that falls to Nancy Pelosi. And so the kind of strength she was able to do behind the scenes with a very narrow majority. If Kevin McCarthy had been taking notes, they will be of great use to him now because it's a very specific skill set to kind of like rally your party in that way every single day. A year ago at this time, there was concern that there was going to be a war in Europe, but there was still some hope that it would be prevented. Yeah. Turned out to be arguably the dominant story of the globe. Um, in this country next year, the one story that I think we're not fully, we're, we're both anticipating, but not fully prepared for is the trial of Donald John Trump, mm. right? If there is an indictment, there's going to be a trial. And that, I don't know if, if everybody is fully ready to realize what that's going to look like. It, it, there is no doubt that if that were to happen, mm -hmm. that would upend the entire political universe. And if you talk to legal experts, they agree on one thing, that this former president faces more legal jeopardy mm -hmm. than perhaps any other president in U.S. history. And, mm -hmm. and so I think that it would you know, certainly be a diversion from all of these other headlines that we are discussing, the right. work of Congress, the work of the White House, and the economy, as well as the war in Ukraine. Chuck, you said trial singular. It I could know. be, right. in, we're talking, Good we could see indictments plural here. Right. That's what the federal investigation that the special counsel has been running on two different things, right, on the Mar-a-Lago documents piece and on the January 6th piece. But there's also that investigation down in Georgia where a lot of legal experts have said he, they think he's in more legal jeopardy potentially in Georgia than he is at the federal level. Mm. We know what we do know is going to be nuts in 2023. It's some of these things that we don't know that I think that's are right. even more uh, unusual. And well, that's why you just got to stick around and watch all of us exactly. do our jobs here at NBC <laughs> News. Kristen and Garrett, enjoy the new year. Thanks. Thanks, Chuck. We can't say hello to 2023 without a proper goodbye to 2022. More unforgettable headlines from the last 12 months up next.
2022 saw history made with Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson sworn in as the first African-American woman to sit on the highest court in the land. She's just one of the people to break barriers over the last year, paving the way for others to blaze their own trails. Here's NBC News correspondent Tremaine Lee. In 2022, the winds of political power in America shifted. And at the vanguard of this new American movement, a diverse group of barrier breakers, politicians, policymakers, and political upstarts who are not only making history, but making change. House Democrats bring in the new year with new leadership. New York Representative Hakeem Jeffries elected to lead House Democrats in the 118th Congress in January. They're replacing Nancy Pelosi. Stand on the shoulders of people like Shirley Chisholm and so many others. Jeffries is the first African-American to lead a political party in either the House or Senate. More congressional firsts in 2023. As the demographics on Capitol Hill continue to evolve, there will be a record number of Hispanic and Latino members, more women, more openly LGBTQ members, and Congress is getting younger. 25-year-old Maxwell Frost, a Democrat from Florida with Afro-Cuban roots, is the first Gen Z member of Congress. Diversity in Congress is about skin color. It's about experience. It's about where you come from. It's about the way you act, who you are. Joining Frost, Summer Lee, a Pennsylvania Democrat. She's the first black woman sent to Congress from her state. Another Democrat, Robert Garcia from California, is the first LGBTQ immigrant ever elected to Congress. An increasingly diverse Republican caucus is heading to Washington as well. We need black excellence everywhere. After winning a newly redrawn district, Wesley Hunt will be one of four black Republican members of the 118th Congress, the most since 1877. Hunt and John James from Michigan were the only non-incumbent winners among 178 black Republicans who ran in 2022. An historic first in Maryland, when Army combat vet Wes Moore is sworn in on January 18th. He'll not only be the state's first black governor, but just the third black governor in U.S. history. Rounding out this historic ticket, Aruna Miller will be the nation's first ever South Asian lieutenant governor. Thank you, Los Angeles. Voters also flexed on the local level. In Los Angeles, choosing Democrat Karen Bass to be their next mayor. It took 241 years for the nation's second largest city to elect a female mayor. I am truly grateful. I have a seat at the table now. <laughs> the Supreme Court kicked off a new term in 2022 with a history-making new associate justice, Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman appointed to the big bench. And one of old Hollywood's brightest lights finally getting her due. Chinese American actress Anna Mae Wong will be the first Asian American to be featured on U.S. currency. Part of that world. And rising above it all, one of new Hollywood's youngest shining stars, Halle Bailey, starring as Ariel in Disney's live action remake of The Little Mermaid, due at theaters in May. But not everyone was excited. Forbes reporting the trailer has 1.5 million dislikes and racist comments from angry, quote unquote, fans. Drowning out the backlash, pure joy. From pushing the social and political boundaries to breaking through America's most stubborn barriers, 2022 was a year that introduced us to those harnessing the power to change tomorrow. That's our show. We want to thank you for joining us for this look back at 2022 headlines, highlights, and history. A special thanks to our incredible team behind the scenes as we get ready to say goodbye to 2022. Here's a toast to 2023. Happy holidays and happy, happy new year. year.
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.